Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are on page number 11. And today is our lesson number 13. Today is our lesson number 13. And we are on page 11. We are in the process of solving the sample problems dealing with multiplication of decimals. This is this problem that you see, problem number 3, is from yesterday. We're going to pick up from we're going to, we're going, we're going to pick up from problem number 4. Today is our lesson number 13, as I said. The first problem we have is first problem we have is 250.1, number 4. 250.1 times 25. Now, if you've been watching this videos from day one, you know that point here is not to simply stand here and solve the problem, is to understand what lies behind it, understand the concept, have, have intuitive understanding of the problem. Don't just sit there and solve the problem mechanically, like a robot, like a nerd, like a freak, like a geek. I want you to look at it at an intuitive level, have some gut feeling, gut, gut understanding, uh, understanding at, some, uh, at the gut level as to what you're dealing with. Instead of just simply doing it out, I want you to look at it in a little bit different light, from a little bit different perspective. Are you able to see that 250.1 is nothing more than 250 plus 0.1? 250 plus 0.1. So one way to actually view this thing is simply that what they're asking here is 250.1 times 25 is simply going to be 250 times 25 plus 0.1 times 25. Of course, what else? If you take if you take uh, 250 times 25 and then you add 0.1 times 25, what you'll end up is 250.1 times 25. Are you with me so far? Second thing I want you to understand is that this part right here, 25 times 25, is something I expect you to know by heart. There are certain things that you have to know by for the exam by heart. And one of, those certain, one of those things that you have to know by heart are your squares. You must know your squares, basic squares, not everything obviously, but some basic squares you must know by heart. I'm looking here. Day number two. I'm going to add one more number here. Here you see the list of the videos from the, from the T's. T's and HESI's. The math, math on these two exams is very similar. If you need some more practice on this concept of multiplication of decimals, here are some videos I would like you to watch. Seven, eight, and nine. I'm going to add one more to it. Day number two. Day 2, 7, 8, and 9. Watch these four videos. Day 2 is where we discuss the squares. And what we learned in day 2 is that 25 times 25, 25 times 25, what we learn is 625. All of these things will come in handy only if you know these basic things, because otherwise, obviously, we are taking more time than what we could have done simply doing the problem. But if you, all, if you know this concept, it helps. So I'm going to pick up speed now. So 25 times 25 is, is 625, therefore if, 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 25, if 25 times 25 is 625, therefore, therefore 250, 250 times 25 would have to be simply 6250. The rest is very simple. A tenth, point 0.1 is the tenth. Tenth, tenth of 25, how much is tenth of 25? Tenth of 25 is simply 2.5. It's simply 2.5. We just add it up. 2.5 and you're done. That's your answer. 6, 2, 5, 2. That is the answer. 6,252.5. That is going to be the final answer. We're going to, I'm going to show you in a little bit when we actually multiply it out. But what I'm trying to point out is that if you're able to see all of this thing visually, immediately, that 25 times 25 is 625. One more time, I'm going to go through the step. 25 times 25 is 625. And how do I know that? Because I memorize my squares. Do it. You will learn it on day number two. Type in T is math, day two. So if you can see 25 times 25 is 625. Therefore, 6, 250 times 25 is 6250. Just stick a zero at the end. And a tenth of 25 is 2.5. There's your answer, 6252.5. Let's multiply it out. Let's multiply it out. 250.1. So we're going to do 250. 
2501 times 25 and we'll worry about we'll worry about the decimal at the end we'll worry about the decimal at the end Another video that you might find helpful is basic math day 30 day 30 basic math this don't confuse the two this is this is T's and this is a basic math. Those are two different concepts, two different series. Series of basic math and series of T's. Those are two different things. So here put down T's math day 7 and here, here you'll put down basic math day 30. The video will pop right up. Let's continue. We have to multiply 2501 by 25. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Yes, I'm going to show you two different ways. First we're going to do it the grown-up method and then I'm going to show you the baby method. Baby method is something that you already know probably. Grown-up method simply tells me that instead of multiplying, instead of multiplying, instead of multiplying first by 5 and then by 2, we're just going to multiply by 25 altogether. Let's do it. 25 times 1 is 25. It's a 0, so it doesn't matter. So 25 times 1 is 25. That was easy. 25 times 5. If I have 525, that's 125. 525s are 125. How do I know that? Because 425s make 100. If 425s make 100, then it stands to reason that 5 of them should make 125. 125 is made up of 1, 2, 5. So we put a 5 here and we carry 12. Carry 12. Are you with me? And then 2 5s are, 2 5s are 50. 2 5s are 50. 50 plus 12 is 62. There you go. And now we take care of our decimal. We only have one decimal place right here. There's only one. So here's our decimal. We just move it one place and we end up with... 6,252.5. Now, if you do not like what I just did here, if you don't like this multiplication, if you're hell-bent that I do it the baby way, we'll do it baby way up here. 2,501 times 25, very quickly. 5 ones are 5, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 fives are 25, 5 carry 2, 2 fives are 10 plus 2 is 12, all the unit digit, now we're going to do the 10 digit, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 0 is 0, 2 fives are 10, 0, carry 1, cross out the 2 and put a 1 there, there. 2 2 is a 4 plus 1 is 5, we end up with 5, 2, 5, 2, 6, there you go, right here, 6, 2, 5, 6, 2, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5. The same answer, same exact answer. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move our decimal from here, one place to up here, and it becomes 6,225. Do you understand? It took us a long time to do one problem here. That is exactly my point. This is not what you do in the real exam. In the real exam, had it been a real exam, this problem should have been done in a matter of, you're not going to blame me, you're going to probably sneer, no more than 15 to 20 seconds. It's a very, very simple problem. Here's what you do. Very, very simple problem. They're asking us 250.1 times 25. You tell them to go, well, I'm not going to say the word. You, go, you tell them to do something to themselves and you forget the point one. Do you understand? Exactly. You, you just uh, ignore the point one. You just pretend it's 250. Ignore point one completely. 25 times 25 is 625 and here's your zero, put a zero there. It's going to be a little more than that, it's going to be a little more than that, the correct answer is going to be a little more than that because we have the point one here. There you go. You don't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo. All of this was a waste of time. We do it here for learning purposes, not for, this is not how we do it in the exam. Number five. Number five. you understand? Just because they give you 250.1 doesn't mean that you have to do 250.1. Tell them to go F themselves. Just do 250. Do you understand? But not the four letter word. No, no, no. One has to be civilized. We're not, never going to use four letter words in the video. Never, never, never. Tell them to fornicate off. Do you understand? Number five. Again, there are, there are quick ways, there are smart ways of doing, taking the exam, and there are nerdy, geeky, 
freakish way of taking the exam. I'm going to show you the quick way first and then we're going to actually do it out only if you are hell-bent on it. 1.13364, this is a 6, this is more than 5. I'm going to pretend it's 0.14. Let's pretend it is approximately 0.14. So it's 0.14 times 2, that's what it is. Forget about, the, forget about that right now. 0.14 times 2, that tells us that the correct answer, whatever it is, is going to be about 0.28. Because 14 times 2, because 14, because 14 times 2 is 28. It's 0.14, so it's 0.28. That's your answer, 0.28. If you find one answer choice that is very close to 0.28, that's your answer. Now, if there happen to be two answer choices that are close to 0.28, and one is a little bit more than that, and one is a little bit less than that, then, of course, you will have to do the problem, only because here it's difficult to figure out whether it's an underestimation or overestimation. This 0.28 is difficult to tell, it's difficult to ascertain whether it's an overestimation or underestimation. I'll tell you why. The reason why it is difficult is because by pretending that 0.1364 is 0.14, we are overestimating it. But at the same time, by pretending that 2.11 is just 2, we are underestimating it here. So here we are overestimating 0.1136 as 0.14. Here we are underestimating, they negate each other, but it's very difficult to tell the extent of uh, the two processes uh, as to which one is going to prevail. And therefore you cannot tell whether the final answer should be a little bit more than 0.28 or a little bit less than 0.28. If it turns out that there are two answer choices, one slightly more than 0.28 and one slightly less than 0.28, in that case you are screwed, you have no choice but to do the work. Do you understand? Let's do it. So we're going to pretend it is, not pretend, we're going to treat this as 1364 times 211. It should go very fast. It should go very fast because we're only multiplying by twos and ones. That should, shouldn't take that long at all. 1 times 1364 is just 1364. It's just 1364. We multiply by 1 again, but this time we're dealing with 10 digits, so we hold the unit digit, multiply by 1, so we end up with again 4, 6, 3, 1. Then we multiply it by 2. 2 times 4 is 8, but make sure you hold the unit digit and the 10 digit. We are dealing with 100 digit. 2 4s are 8. 2 6s are 12. 2 carry 1. 2 6s are 12. 2 3s are 6 plus 1 is 7 and 2 1s are 1. Or 2 1s are 2. Looks like it's going to be 28 point something right there. We says 0.28 times uh, something. Let's do it out. So this is 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's 0. Carry 1. 1. 1 plus 3 plus 6 is 10. 1 plus 3 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 8 is 18. 8. Carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7. That's an 8 and that's a 2. Now let's take care of our decimal. Let's see how many decimal places we need to move it. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places and here we have 1, 2. Remember, we're multiplying by 2.1 here, right here. Oh, sorry. It's not 13.64, it is... It is... It is... It is... Point which is why we have the six decimal places. We have one, two, three, four, and one and two, see? One, two, three, four, and four, five, six. So we pick up our decimal here, move it six places. One, two, three, four, five, six, it's gonna end up here. Which was not a surprise to us at all. It wasn't a surprise that the answer is 0.28 because that's what it is right there. It turns out it is 0.2887, the answer is 0.2887, which we knew it was going to be 0.28. Where to put the decimal place should not be a surprise. There should not be a confusion there. It should not be, there should not be a confusion. There should not be a struggle as to where to put the decimal place. Do you understand? I'm going to stop right now. Because I took too long in the previous problem. I'm going to stop right now, otherwise the video is going to be too long. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 14, where we'll do the remaining five problems, 6 through 10. Okay? Bye now.